Today we're going to take a look at Power BI and exercises from the Dashboard in a Day workshop. Here we are on page 6 and we're going to go through a few steps to import sample data. First things first, open up the Power BI desktop application. The welcome screen has recent files that you've opened, some links to learn more, blog, forum, tutorial, and there's a yellow sign in button in the middle. Here you want to go ahead and put in your username and password for Office 365 to get connected. Now that we're logged in, you can see your name in the top right as well as your account in Office 365. If you click Power BI Service, it'll actually take you to app.powerbi.com, which is the main page to show you workspaces you have, view your storage usage, check out what kind of license that you have. By clicking the gear icon in the top right, you can do manage storage, and here you'll see if you have a free or pro license. Excellent shortcut for finding out what kind of license someone has. Okay, back on the exercise document, we want to start with step one, launching the Power BI desktop, do sign in step two, now we're on step three, file options and settings. So let's go ahead and check that out. File, Options, and Settings. And here we want to look at Regional, Locale, and Select English. So Regional Settings. Down on the bottom, Locale is English. Looks good. Next we want to load some data. So hit OK. We'll do Get Data. And we're going to select Text CSV. From here, we want to go to Dashboard in a Day, Data, U.S. Sales, BI Fact. Excellent. So there's a preview of our data. We'll hit Open for Step 9. Data type detection is based on the first 200 rows. Since our data is large and will take time, resources scan, let's leave the option 200 after load, loads the data from your set. Edit allows you to perform shaping, such as merge columns, changing data types, and bringing in additional data. You should be opening the query editor window, as shown in the picture on the right. Notice the data type of each field is indicated next to the header. So we'll go ahead and hit load. Excellent. So now with the data loaded, we can move on to our next step. <clears throat> you see product ID, date, zip, units, and revenue. Matches our screenshot. Looks good. And over here in the Relationships tab, we see that's the only source we have loaded right now. So let's go down to step 11. Is set zip field to data type whole number. To ensure that zip codes that don't start with zero lose the leading zero, we will format them as text. Change the column type. Right click. Data type to text. Modeling data type whole number. Change it to text. Right up here in the toolbar. There we go. Excellent. Now let's get data that is in Excel. So we're going to do new source. We're going to get data from Excel. Step 14, we're looking for a BI dimensions. There we go. In the navigator window, select all of the tables, date, geo, manufacturer, and product. Date, geo, manufacturer, product. The preview retrieves a sample of data for us to see. Click OK to edit these tables in the query editor. Data is being loaded from the Excel file in multiple tables. Seventeen, we want to do new source, more, additional data. In the Get Data dialog, select Folder as shown, and click Connect. Click Browse for Folder to navigate to the location of DIAD, Dashboard in a Day, Data International Sales. OK, we can do that.
Excellent. Dialog displays the list of files in the folders. Since we want to combine data, click Combine and Edit. Combine and Edit. Combine file dialog shows by default Power BI detects data type based on the first 200 rows. There's also an option to select each individual file in the folder using example file drop down. Select OK. So we're going to use the default settings here. The example is the first file. The delimiter is a comma and the data type is inferred based on the first 200. This gives us a preview of the data. We'll go ahead and hit OK to load the files in that folder. In the Query Editor window, there will be a new query called International Sales. That's the same name as the folder we selected. Now we'll see a Query Editor window called International Sales. If you did not see the Queries pane on the left, click the icon to expand. Okay, so over here we do have a query window for international sales. We notice that the column zip is of type whole number. Let's change it to text as before. So step 33, we're going to highlight the zip column and change the data type to text using the toolbar above. So let's highlight the zip column. We're going to go over here to transform change the data type to text. The selected column has an existing type conversion. Would you like to replace or preserve? Replace. There we go. In the Queries panel, notice Transform Binary Folder is created. This contains a function used to load each of the files in the folder. If you compare this table in BI Sales Fact you imported earlier, you'll see International Sales contains two new columns, source.name and country. So here we can see the transform for international file and how it's doing the file import. If we compare all of this to BI Sales Fact, we'll notice that this one is shorter, having fewer fields where international sales is wider and having source.name and country as new fields. Excellent. That all looks good. Step 35. We do not need source.name column. Select source.name column from the ribbon, home, remove columns. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click on that. Home. And we're looking for remove columns. There we go. Applied steps. We can see a history of all the things that we've been doing over here on the right. Really nice way to be able to backtrack or undo. Click on the drop down next to country column to see the unique values. You will only see Australia. Click on load more to validate you've included data from various countries. Load more. 7 megs, 40 megs, 60 megs, 90 megs of CSV. Wow. It's rolling through each file one at a time because International Sales is a folder with multiple CSV files that have the same schema. So now on our country drop down, we're going to see Australia, Canada, France, Japan, and Mexico. Five different choices. But the way we're able to get there was by clicking Load More. So it would do a deep parse of all of the files and all of the rows. You will see the countries, click OK, you can perform various types of filters, sort ascending, and shaping operations. That's step 38, the end of exercise 1, and I'm going to go ahead and save this file to the desktop as dashboard in a day, exercise 1. That wraps up our video, and thanks for watching.